Today, Sunday, April 3rd, 2022, is the day that the Lord has made, and we will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to worship at Geneva Presbyterian Church in Laguna Woods, California. All are welcome here. Really, we mean that. All are welcome. Just as God receives all who believe in Jesus Christ, Geneva aspires to be an inclusive congregation, worshiping, learning, connecting, giving, and serving together. We are grateful that you have joined our faith community for worship today. A few announcements for life at Geneva. If you'd like to know more about Geneva Presbyterian Church, text the word WELCOME to 949-575-8675. Text the word WELCOME to 949-575-8675. Messaging and data rates may apply. Guests and visitors, please join us for the meet and greet lunch following today's worship service. I will host this gathering in Simpson Hall. And even those of you who are watching on TV6 today, please come over if you would like to learn more about the church and meet some of our people. Uh, there's no um, expectation except have a great time with us. Holy Week services begin next Sunday, April 10th, with Palm Confirmation Sunday at 10.30 a.m., online, Village TV 6, and live in person. Maundy Thursday, Tenebrae, Thursday, April 14th at 7 p.m., PM, live in person only. And Good Friday, April 15th at 12 p.m., online only. And Easter Sunday, April 17th at 10.30 a.m., online, Village TV 6, and live in person. You can learn more about our Holy Week services at GenevaPress.org. There is so much more going on at Geneva. To explore all fellowship and service opportunities, go to our website, GenevaPress.org, or download the Church Center app on your smartphone or tablet. May each of us have a loving, generous, and inclusive experience as we worship, learn, connect, give, and serve together. In this way, we remember, live, and tell the way of Jesus by being just, kind, and humble. And may we be filled with joy and peace on this journey. Let us prepare for worship. Will you join me in the call to worship? As people formed by God, we give praise to God. Dry ground in the sea, rivers in the desert. Christ among us, God is doing a new thing. As people restored by God, we give praise to God. Dry ground in the sea, rivers in the desert. Christ among us, God is doing a new thing. As people pressing on in faith, we give praise to God. Dry ground in the sea, Rivers in the desert, Christ among us, God is doing a new thing. The Psalter reading for today is Psalm 126. When the Lord restored the fortunes of Zion, we were like those who dream. Then our mouth was filled with laughter and our tongue with shouts of joy. Then it was said among the nations, the Lord has done great things for them. The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced. Restore our fortunes, O Lord, like the water courses in the Negeb. May those who sow in tears reap with shouts of joy. Those who go out weeping, bearing the seed for sowing, shall come home with shouts of joy, carrying their sheaves. Cry out for your hand of mercy. 
you join me in the prayer of confession? If we ask God to restore us to the way we have been, then we have not asked for as much as God intends to give. God is not content simply to return or restore us to former things. Instead, God seeks to give the gift of resurrection, a new and abundant life. With confidence in God's generosity, we confess our sins and seek the new life offered in Jesus Christ. Purifying God, we grow comfortable with the way things are in our lives, in the church and in the world. We do not always welcome the new life you offer in Christ, for you overturn our notions of power and protocol. Sure of our own righteousness, we are critical of others. Wanting to control our assets, we hoard the gifts you give us. Disciple-making God, hear our confession and those we now offer in silence. May we listen to you as well. Forgive us, we pray, for seeking our gain at the expense of others. Help us bend our lives toward your own life of self-giving and sacrifice. Fill us, our homes and churches, the whole world, with the abundant love of Christ until all are made new. In Christ's name we pray. Amen. Friends, believe the good news. In Jesus Christ we are forgiven. The power of confession and the power of forgiveness. Two very important practices in the Christian faith.
to confess our sin and receive forgiveness from God, to ask forgiveness from others and receive forgiveness from them. Let's continue being a blessing to one another in the passing of the blessing. May the joy of Christ be with you. Let us continue in our worship of God. The Old Testament reading for today is taken from Isaiah 43, verses 16 through 21. Thus says the Lord who makes a way in the sea, a path in the mighty waters, who brings out chariot and horse, army and warrior. They lie down, they cannot rise. They are extinguished, quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. The wild animals will honor me, the jackals and the ostriches, for I give water in the wilderness, rivers in the desert, to give drink to my chosen people, the people whom I formed for myself so that they might declare my praise.
The epistle reading for today is taken from Philippians, chapter 3, verses 4 through 14. If anyone else has reason to be confident in the flesh, I have more, circumcised on the eighth day, a member of the people of Israel, of the tribe of Benjamin, a Hebrew, born of Hebrews, as to the law, a Pharisee as to zeal, a persecutor of the church as to righteousness under the law, blameless. Yet whatever gains I had, these I have come to regard as lost because of Christ. More than that, I regard, I regard everything as loss because of the surpassing value of knowing Christ Jesus, my Lord. For his sake, I have suffered the loss of all things, and I regard them as rubbish in order that I may gain Christ and be found in him, not having righteousness of my own that comes from the law, but one that comes through faith in Christ, the righteousness from God based on faith. I want to know Christ and the power of his resurrection and the sharing of his sufferings by becoming like him in his death. If somehow I may obtain the resurrection from the dead, not that I have already obtained this or have already reached the goal, but I press on to make it my own because Christ Jesus has made me his own. Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it my own, but the one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Christ Jesus. The gospel reading comes to us today from the Gospel of John, chapter 12, verses 1 through 8. Listen to and for the word of God. Six days before the Passover, Jesus came to Bethany, the home of Lazarus, whom he had raised from the dead. There they gave a dinner for him. Martha served, and Lazarus was one of those at the table with him. Mary took a pound of costly perfume made of pure nard, anointed Jesus' feet, and wiped them with her hair. The house was filled with the fragrance of the perfume. But Judas Iscariot, one of his disciples, the one who was about to betray him, said, why was this perfume not sold for 300 denarii and the money given to the poor? He said this not because he cared about the poor, but because he was a thief. He kept the common purse and used, used to steal what was put into it. Jesus said, leave her alone. She bought it so that she might keep it for the day of my burial. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Join me and agree with me in prayer. Almighty God, we are grateful for this time together as we have listened to your word and we are listening to your spirit, bring it to us. Give us ears to hear and courage to believe and act in faith. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. God's actions of salvation are God's, not ours. Let me say that again. God's actions of salvation are God's, not ours. As you recall from last week's sermon, when you experience the gospel, that is salvation, which the Bible illumines, Christ exposes, and grace captures, you will live the calling you have received. That calling is to persist in the work of reconciliation. That is salvation. 
The cycle of preparing for and living the calling is repetitive and ongoing. The ongoing process of conversion, reconciliation, salvation, reveals the new creation you are. Listen to the following illustration of how change, although not popular, can happen. In 1523, an English animal trainer named John Fitzherbert said, quote, the dog must be trained when he is a whelp or else it will not be trained for it is hard to make an old dog find a new scent, end quote. Today we've summarized his insight into this well-known adage, quote, you can't teach an old dog new tricks, end quote. It sounds good, but is it true? A show on the Discovery Channel called Mythbusters likes to take time-worn adages like this one and see if they're true or false. So Mythbusters hosts Jamie Heineman and Adam Savage decided to go after this one too. They found a pair of aging Alaskan Malamutes who didn't know a single trick in the book. Malamutes are known for their stubbornness. As seven-year-old canines, siblings Bobo and Cece, were equivalent to a couple of 50-year-olds in dog years, arguably qualifying them for the old dog category. After four days of training, Bobo and Cece proved Fitzherbert flat wrong. Each could heal, sit, lie down, stay, and shake upon command from Jamie and Adam. Their conclusion? Myth busted. You can teach old dogs new tricks. Ongoing preparation for living the calling is necessary because change is always engaging us. Now, whether we go for it or not is really important. But change is, my friends, and very significant for living the calling. Jonathan Edwards, the great 18th century Reformed theologian, preaching on Isaiah 43 notes, there yet remains to be accomplished in bringing the whole world to Christian faith and settling the world in that state of light, peace, and holiness, end quote. Can the church, can individual followers of Jesus learn to be evangelists, sharers of good news? We must, because that is what living the calling is all about. Isaiah sees God doing a new thing. It doesn't take much reflection to come up with barriers that are in place to stop humanity from living in light and peace. Hate, anger, chaos, arrogance, posturing, and the like have raised their ugly heads. The human spirit is motivated by control and fear these days. We need a new thing. And Christians can lead the way. Isaiah uses the image of water as a barrier to moving forward. For the Israelites, the Red Sea was a barrier, but God parted the Red Sea. And after the people of God passed through, the water captured Pharaoh's army. When the Israelites faced the barrier of the water and began to walk through the barrier, they experience God moving them forward in their calling and conversion. Isaiah 43, verses 18 and 19 read, Do not remember the former things or consider the things of old. I am about to do a new thing. Now it springs forth. Do you not perceive it? I will make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert, end quote. 
In Psalm 126, we see the people of God leaning into God's promise to Abraham that they would be a great people. Psalm 126 verse 3 reads, quote, The Lord has done great things for us, and we rejoiced, end quote. For the Bible of God, for the people of God, Psalm 126 was used as part of their journey to Jerusalem for Passover. We can use it during our journey in Lent, leading to Easter. For both the people of God then and now, we are to be on a journey with God who is at work in our lives, doing that new thing. Philippians chapter 3 verses 4 through 14, is significant for examination of further preparing for living the calling. Yes, we must be rooted in today, but also envision the new thing that God is doing. Paul is writing to the Christians at the church in Philippi. He was in prison, most likely waiting to be executed. This letter to the Philippian Christians asks them to look at their past, examine their present, but also envision that God is leading them as they grow as new creation in Christ. Change is all over what I just said. The Philippian Christians had to look at their past, examine their present, but also see that God was leading them as they grew as new creations in Christ. Paul warns the Philippians and warns us that confidence in the flesh is destructive. Remember, God's actions of salvation are God's, not ours. And when we place confidence in the flesh thinking what great things we have done. Destruction is right around the corner. Philippians 3, verses 13 and 14 read, Beloved, quote, Beloved, I do not consider that I have made it on my own, but this one thing I do, forgetting what lies behind and straining forward to what lies ahead, I press on toward the goal for the prize of the heavenly call of God in Jesus Christ, end quote. In this regard, William Greenway writes, the goal of Christian spirituality is one's own imitation of the spirit of Christ, celebrated in the Kenosis hymn, a spirit of compassion and sympathy a spirit which leads to a life that remains faithful to loving action of others, even unto death, end quote. This citation from Greenway emboldens the commitment for further preparation in living the calling with reflection in the now, but not yet of conversion and salvation. The text in John 12, verses 1 through 8, is quite insightful for our journey with God. Even Mary wanted to grow, change in her journey with God. Her extravagance of anointing Jesus' feet with expensive perfume overcame the barrier of Judas's rejection that she was being wasteful. Mary could only give her best to Jesus and that he offered her a new way to live. Jesus said to Judas in Mary's earshot in John chapter 12, verses 7 to 8, Leave her alone. You always have the poor with you, but you do not always have me. Believing in Jesus is strange because it means listening to his voice and heeding his values, defying government as savior and embracing him as the only one who can save. Jesus is the only one who invites us to journey with him from the now 
into more of the not yet. We are living in a time of great uncertainty. I'm not telling you anything you don't already know. As individuals and a church, we must make a clear assessment of our losses and gains in the way we are currently doing things. As you approach Holy Week and the impact of the seven last words of Christ on the cross for your movement forward into the future of resurrection, you must ask this question. Do you know what the seven last words of the church are? Well, let me tell you, we've never done it that way before. As Christians, we must turn the barriers of rigid fundamentalism into stepping stones into living the calling which the gospel demonstrates. The message of the Bible is salvation. Belief in Jesus Christ saves us from ourselves and false saviors. Our assurance of salvation is not based on merit, only grace. Peter J. Gomes, former plumber professor of Christian morals, writes, We Christians, especially those of us who share a Protestant and evangelical faith, need a bigger God that goes against the conventional wisdom of our little faith. With such a God, we need fear nothing the future has to offer. End quote. Experiencing life as a new creation in Christ is the only way to go, my friends. Lean into God, making you a new creation. Reorient your sense of time to God's time. Lean into the gospel, which the Bible illumines, Christ exposes, and grace captures. Then you will live the calling you have received. Some might become reawakened in their Christian faith and practices, while others may even become Christian. Further prepare to live your calling. Life changes through reconciliation, conversion, and salvation. Go for it. Amen. I hope each of you has had a loving, generous, and inclusive experience in worship today. If so, we will be even more effective in how we remember, live, and tell the way of Jesus by being just, kind, and humble. Thank you for your ongoing faithfulness in your tithes, offerings, and service. Go to GenevaPress.org and follow the Give link at the top of the homepage. And donate online or write a check to fund the operating budget at Geneva, our on-campus ministries, our local, national, and international mission partners, the Deacon Fund, and the special offerings of the Presbyterian Church USA. For opportunities to serve, please click the Serve tab at the top of the home page, and then click the Local Partners tab for a list of opportunities. Remember, giving and serving from your life wallet is foundational to our calling as Christians. Be generous, give, and serve today. Let us pray. Almighty, gracious, and loving God, we come to you praying for the world that you created, everything about it, every human being, all that is, 
came about because of you. And yet there is so much destruction going on with wars, with actions of hate, with words of hurtfulness and anger through lies, deception, all forms of abuse, emotionally, physically, spiritually. We pray, God, for the people in Ukraine, and we pray for the refugees. We pray for the countries that are receiving these persons, older, younger adults and children. We pray for the end of that war. We pray for peace that only you can give to the human heart that often is rooted in things that are not good. God, we pray for people we know that are suffering and hurting. We pray, God, for ways that you might even use us this day to give that word of encouragement to serve them in ways that could be very tangible and helpful. We pray, God, that you would be at work in changing our minds and hearts and giving us that vision you have of us becoming new and every human being becoming new and how our words and actions can assist that journey for someone, somewhere, at some time, in and through our lives. We pray for ourselves to become less self-centered, to become more just, kind, and humble. And to that end, we now pray the prayer that Jesus taught us to pray, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into destruction, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Receive this word of blessing. God is at work in your life, in my life. In fact, in every human life, some are just not aware yet. We have gathered for worship this day. We have read God's word. We've heard a proclamation of God's word. And I now charge you to go into God's world with the very stamp of Christ on your life. For it is true, through your words and actions... You will be the best Jesus that someone sees. So my friends, may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the hope, peace, joy, and love of Christ be yours this day and every day until we gather again next Sunday, Palm Confirmation Sunday here at Geneva. God bless you, my friends. Amen.